Rookie continues to choke the life out of Jim Gordon. Batman begs his partner to let him go, and Mr. Bloom commands the mech to obey. The machine launches Jim high into the air. Gordon finds he is on a direct course towards a news copter, so, thinking fast, he takes out his grappling hook, launches it at a roof, and pulls himself to the ground, barely missing the helicopter's blades. Hurtling back towards the building, Jim breaks through the roof, landing on a crate of Mr. Bloom's seeds. Still under control after Bloom put a transmitter into the suit, Rookie lunges at Batman. Gordon knows his stealth tech won't work on the mech, but the molecular contractors in his fingers are effective in sabotaging Rookie's missile tubes. Batman leaps into the air and shoots at Rookie's feet. Now immobilized, the mech activates its missile technology. Ah, oh, after all you've been through together, that's a whole lot of cold, Jim. Over in the Iceberg Lounge, Duke Thomas remains trapped. He grabs an acidic compound and throws it at the Penguin's goons, distracting his captors and giving him the opportunity to escape. As he flees, the Penguin is impressed, but around here, the house always wins. Meanwhile, Mr. Bloom stands over Batman, victorious. Such a short career. Over before you hit your stride. I know you must be wondering if you made any difference. If what you did mattered to anyone. Well, it did. Hugely. To me. All this is possible because of you. If only you knew what you were up against. What's hiding in me? The change. I want so badly to keep you alive to see it. What's coming? A whole city regrown with brand new seeds. Jim Gordon laughs, and Mr. Bloom is shocked to see his seeds are being electrified. These seeds are really electromagnetic shells wrapped around radioactive cores. When exposed to an electrical current from Rookie's head, the seeds overload while Mr. Bloom's powers are rendered inert. Over in the waters around the Iceberg Lounge, Duke emerges from the sea, having survived Penguin's attack. As his goons look on, amused, they prepare to kill the kid when they are knocked out cold by Bruce Wayne. He found Duke using the rec center's computers, which Thomas has used to investigate the Penguin, and is able to save the boy's life. He takes the young man home, but on the way he lectures Duke on his recklessness. The boy, however, is distracted by a text from Daryl, who says he finally has info on Duke's parents. Bruce tries to get the boy to open up to him, and, frustrated with everything going on around them, Duke admits that he has a problem with Wayne. Bruce was able to deduce where Duke was. A normal worker at the rec center couldn't do that. He figured out how to turn a garden of Joker's horrors into a playground. A normal person couldn't do that either. He figures out riddles like nobody else, better than any man in the world. But he won't admit who he is and Duke can't stand it any longer. Bruce is baffled at these words, but Duke doesn't want to hear any more denial. He thinks the former Batman is being selfish. Thomas leaks down into the path of a subway, and Bruce, concerned, follows. Though Wayne still doesn't understand, Duke continues to vent his frustrations. Anyone could be the man Bruce is now, but the man Bruce used to be was larger than life. He inspired everyone to do more. Duke demands that Wayne look at his life, that he look at the shadows. The train gets closer and Bruce begins to panic. But Duke insists that he think about the missing space in his memory and what shape it takes. During this time, Jim has badly beaten and now exposed Mr. Bloom. Grateful for rookie sacrifice, he arrests the villain. As they take Mr. Bloom away, the people of Gotham applaud him. Though Jim is wounded, he smiles, proud of the work he and his team has done. He thanks Julia and Daryl, but Mr. Bloom is not impressed. Curious, Jim decides to unmask the villain, but before he can, Batman is impaled. Hi there! Alone on a park bench, Bruce reflects on what just happened. He can't believe it, but he forces himself to say it. He 
He is... Bruce's train of thought is interrupted by another man passing by. The man says he's seen Bruce sitting here a few times now, but he understands. We all need some time alone. Bruce says he was in an accident near this place, and the other man says that's funny. So was he. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is my recap and review of Batman number 47. So this feels like a polished piece, putting out its usual epic art and storytelling. And it's hardly a surprise anymore, Snyder and Capullo just keep nailing Batman. Issue after issue I get something new, fun, and enjoyable. It's a great comic overall. But there's one thing that's bothering me. It's been announced, and was quite clearly telegraphed in this issue, that Bruce Wayne will be returning as Batman very soon. And while that's perfectly fine, I can't help but wonder what was the point of making Jim Gordon Batman in the first place. I see the point of someone like Mr. Bloom, he's a villain with a plan and a history, and even though we don't yet know what these things are yet, it's interesting and I'm looking forward to learning what's going on with this character. We also get to what's going on with Bruce Wayne, Duke Thomas, and a good chunk of the supporting cast. But Jim Gordon and all that stuff with the Powers Corporation, well it doesn't feel like it has any purpose. I can't help but feel this would have been a strong introduction for the new Batman. It could have settled into a new status quo, and I think it would have been a perfect introduction to a series of story arcs. Mr. Bloom would have been a great first villain, and these cool ideas could have been explored with more depth over a few story arcs as opposed to just one. See, drama, stakes, tension, and epic action are all earned through careful context and building stories up. And that's just not happening here. Ah oh, well, I assume I'm just being bitter. Between Marvel and DC, we seem like in a constant warpath of getting 5 minute changes to characters that get swept away in no time at all. Superior this, superior that, girl Thor, black America, powered down Superman, powered up Robin. It's all happening too fast and not sticking, and it loses its edge because nothing matters. It all just feels like both Marvel and DC are trying to grab headlines and make a quick buck. And while that's nothing new to comics, it does feel like we're reaching critical mass with this. So it's not Batman that I'm annoyed with. But like I said, the comic is good. I recognize the high quality of Batman number 47, and I do recommend this. I just find it frustrating in the context of the ongoing editorial climate of modern comics, which is pretty much how I felt since the very beginning of this story arc. It's good. It's a well-made comic, if not currently one of DC's best. But it's hard to ignore the whole temporary nature of everything. We didn't even get a full year of new Batman, and I can't help but wonder why they even bothered in the first place. Other than, you know, the obvious desire to sell more comics and grab headlines. Which, sadly, probably worked. I don't know what the sales of new Batman have been like, but I can only imagine how explosive things will sell when Bruce Wayne returns. We can tell from our own viewers' comments that people were excited for that moment, and I admit even I'm a little excited for that moment. But the problem is, we're not going to learn anything from this, and Marvel and DC are going to keep pulling nonsense like this off. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.